Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I create my cinematic videos, those retro feeling, vintage looking like reels that you may be seeing on Instagram. <laughs> How do I get down from here? White pants was a mistake. If you're into that dreamy retro vibe, then stick around and I'll show you how to get it. The first step is planning. We don't do that. <laughs> These videos that I make are supposed to be simple, random, but at the same time, like beautifully nostalgic. And it's that randomness feeling that makes them unique. But that's not totally true about not having any plan at all. I do make some. I often find ideas through watching old films, old movies, or just scrolling through Instagram or any other social media platforms and get inspired. And then I take these inspirations and write them down in my notepad. And then planning out what type of shots I want to get, like do I want to have medium, wides, or close-ups, or maybe a mix of all. I'll write down a couple of ideas like film this or film that and get a close-up of the eye or the hand, you know, something like that. The last thing I plan, the most important one, is what type of story do I want to convey and tell my viewers? Like, is the story like a about a guy riding a bus or a story about someone enjoying the sunset. Simple things, everyday things that you do, like even eating breakfast, that could be a story in itself, buying ice cream, buying cookies, going for a walk, going to your job, anything can be a story. And I plan out where I want to film, that's the most important part because finding a nice cinematic locations is not always easy, especially if you live in a city. <laughs> Location is key for creating that nostalgic feel. I look for places with natural beauty, interesting textures, and most importantly, good lighting. So it's all about finding these unique places and just being creative. So planning out the location, planning out what type of shots I want to get, and planning some kind of story. I don't always have a story ready and I make one on the way. After I made the rough plan, I go out and start filming. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why is this not stopping? Oh my god. <laughs> the world is spinning. Well, when filming, I keep a couple of things in mind. First and foremost, obviously, my plan, the shot list, how I want them to be, and secondly, the light. And in this case, it's only the sun. So let's start off with the light. It's very important to have good lighting in your videos. If everything is too overexposed, too bright, it doesn't look good. If it's too dark, neither is that. But there is an easy solution for that. As I told you, the sun. It's a perfect light source, especially if you're making these retro feeling videos. Early mornings and late afternoons are perfect because then you get that golden hour, that sunset, sunrise time, and it's the best light for shooting any video. How you are doing up there on the tree? Sitting good, right? Please don't fall, okay? But it's a good angle, right? Cool, cool shot. But the challenge with the sun is that it's very unpredictable. Like now there's a lot of clouds in the sky and the intensity of the light changes always. So I need to... Oh my God, these birds. Oh, annoying. So I need to always keep a lookout on my ISO so my footage doesn't get too overexposed or underexposed. Also, play around with the light. It can be a lot of fun. Like, do you try to film the shadow side or the light side? Or do you, where is the light located when you're shooting? So switching that up can change the whole feeling of the footage. Then let's get back to the first point and that's to switch up the angles. It's important to shoot a mixture of different types of shots. So as I told you, you need to have a close-up, a medium shot and a wide shot. If you can get all those three in your video, then you're golden. And to do that, you just need to not be lazy. You need to move your camera closer or zoom in to get a close-up shot. You need to move your camera further away or walk further away to get a wider shot. So yeah, close-up, medium, wide shot. So don't be lazy. You actually need to... Oh my God, these birds, please shut up. You actually need to walk and you need to move your camera closer and further away in order to get these different type of shots. And another point I want to make is 
don't just have the same type of, how do you say it, what you're showing in the shot. Like for instance, I try to mix up humans, objects, nature, texture, like think about all these different aspects that you see around you. Like here is a rock, right? It's nature, then we have flower. It's also nature, but it's, it's living nature. So I need to mix it up. I'm shooting my face, but you get tired of looking at the person all the time. So maybe I'll do a close up of my hat or my watch, something like that. Mix, mix all those shots together. That's how you get a good dish by mixing a lot of different ingredients. Now, when shooting these types of videos, I would recommend to either go handheld or use a tripod because in order to get that retro feeling, you need to realize they didn't have gimbals back in time. Not uh, easily accessible ones at least. So you need to either go tripod and have your shot as steady as possible and just let it breathe. Just don't cut too often. We'll get back to that in editing. Let it stand there for a while and then just, just film. Just capture the moment, capture the frames. So use a tripod, a steady one. Or, you know, just go full handheld mode because then you get this shaking and natural feeling of the footage because that's what we're after, right? That natural beauty. If you look at a lot of movies, even modern ones, a lot of shots there are steady. They don't move. They are static on the tripod. Even action movies, man, if you just look for that, you will find that there's a lot and I mean a lot of tripod shots. Just pay attention how where is the camera when you're watching the next movie is it moving with the character or is it static another thing if you have a possibility for that is to play around with the focus like so a lot of older movies are actually not very sharp because they didn't have the technology for that back in the day the lenses were not, were not as sharp as they are today so i guess we've covered the gear part by now you need a camera a tripod and your hands <laughs> so you can either shoot handheld or on a tripod to get this uh, feeling that i have in my videos you don't need much you don't even need a microphone use the built one you have in your camera because you're not making vlogs you're not talking to the camera you're just capturing the surrounding sound and the built-in mic is enough for that uh, i have two tripods one with which has this extendable legs so it's much more uh, taller and can get taller and also I have a smaller one in my backpack that I use for vlogging or when I don't want to carry that much and I just want to put it on the ground and film but then again it cannot extend its legs it's very small and cute <laughs> but I would recommend you getting a cheap tripod you can find them for as low as $20 I think mine is only like 40 50 I believe <laughs> and it's a really good one you can even use your phone it's as simple as that you don't need a lot of equipment to get these types of videos a lot of it comes to editing now editing is in my opinion where the magic happens first and foremost it's very important that you cut for the story like the idea that you had initially the story that you wanted to create and share you want to cut so it shows that story you know just don't cut randomly or don't just pick the most beautiful shots and put them together you need to decide which one fits into your story if you're making a video about hiking or like going out in the nature and then you suddenly show me you driving into a car even though that shot might be nice it's not very fitting or you sitting in the airplane you know that doesn't fit into the whole story but that shouldn't be a problem if you just film what happens at the location so if you go for a hike and only film while you are at the hike then you're supposed to have all the shots that fit into that story but then again it's also important to pick the most nicely looking shots even though some shots are ugly but they fit into the story i still wouldn't take them like if you're making a short form video you don't need that many cuts that many clips just pick the the most beautiful ones right but still in the need to match story you know in, it, it's a mix it's a balance beautiful shots and those that fit into the story <laughs> okay i'm rambling too much but uh, the conclusion there is film what's beautiful what looks good on camera but also fits into the story and after that it's the time for the magic sauce and that's color grading and color correcting it's a difference between those two but you don't need to know that i've personally made a power grade that i just apply every single time because I found my own style that I like and I want to have a consistency across all my videos that they look similar. And for me personally, I prefer that warm 
film look. And after all that is done, I finished all that off with a overlay of those rounded corals. It's an overlay from a vintage camera called Super 8, I believe, and it just mimics that 4x3 film look. That's what I use when posting videos on Instagram or YouTube. Like especially on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube Shorts where you share those short form videos, I don't care about this vertical aspect ratio which is 1080 by 1920 and also it changes depending on the phone and the aspect ratio of the screen. So instead I just want to have my own look that is recognizable. Oh, that's my video. And I, maybe I should follow that guy, who knows, subscribe by the way. <laughs> and you can either make it yourself if you are good or find one online that you can download or ask me and I will send it to you. Another thing is that it's important to choose a fitting soundtrack. So you need to find something, you know, chill, something lofi vibes and so that it matches your whole aesthetic, your whole vibe. Don't go just for the song you like, but something that fits into your video. And this has been it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm making a video every single day for 30 days. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. But I hope you enjoy them. So see you tomorrow. Bye.